Hi, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., a part of the Marxist Third Worldist Network. Today I wanted to talk about a subject I addressed before, but from a somewhat different angle. Driving home from eating at a really nice Italian restaurant in McAllen, Texas, um, which is about three miles from here. Um, I was listening to Sirius XM Progress. Now ordinarily uh, I will only listen to Sirius XM Progress as an alternative to using um, Citrusel, Metamucil, or Milk of Magnesia. But I decided that I would listen and um, Dean Obidalem was doing the show at that time. Um, for those of you that don't know who Dean Obidala is, he is a Palestinian American, um, a host on Sirius XM for Sirius XM Progress, and um, he was condemning the Palestinian invasion of Israel, Gaza to Israel. Now, let me put some nuance on this. Nobody wants to see anyone killed, I don't think. Maybe there are some sadists out there who feel that way. I am not one of them. It does not bring me joy to hear about people, especially young children and babies, being killed um, by the opposing side. I don't like it. Makes me very unhappy. But again, returning to a point I made before. What would we say if we found out, in retrospect, something we didn't know before? And bear in mind, I'm simply making this up. This is not real. Um, that the prisoners, the Jewish prisoners, in concentration camps in Germany and elsewhere got a hold of some bombs and they lobbed those bombs at the SS officers. Would we feel any compassion for those SS officers? I would not. I'd be happy they did it. Now, Am I happy that the Palestinians killed innocent civilians? I mean, not guards. They weren't guards. No, I'm not happy about it. But I understand it. I understand it. The Palestinians in Gaza are held as prisoners. They can't get out. From Gaza, Jews have two exits out of that land. For Palestinians, they only have one. Um, it is an extraordinarily difficult situation living in Gaza, or for that matter, in the West Bank. These are human beings and they are being treated like animals. People like Benjamin, quote unquote, Bibi, King Bibi, Netanyahu, he is among the worst fruits of that rotten tree that is causing these problems right now for the Palestinians. He is certainly not the last Prime Minister to do it, and I doubt, given current circumstances, that he will be the last. So what happens when he starts killing innocent people, including babies, in Gaza? He gets support from the West, from Joe Biden, and so on. 
Why aren't the Palestinians getting similar support? It literally makes no sense. It is an utter catastrophe that people, real people, homo sapiens sapiens, are being treated like trash and are being subjected to this type of inhumane treatment by an established government. A government, namely Israel, which has done everything in its power to prevent Palestine from becoming a nation. Why? Because Israel wants to control them. So where is Saudi Arabia? Where is Egypt? Where is Kuwait? Where are the Arab Emirates? And so on. They are nowhere to be found. Egypt receives enormous amounts of money from the US. Most of the Arab countries have now resigned themselves to the presence of Israel in the Near East. They've resigned themselves to it. Does that mean they're happy about it? I don't know. It was all a political game to begin with. And so now these same Arab countries are making peace with Israel. A colonial power, originally a European colonial power, which planted its roots in a land that was occupied by Palestinians. So anybody who tells you that Palestine was an unoccupied desert before the Israelis started Israel is lying to you. That is simply not true. So why? Why? Is Dean Obidala a Palestinian American defending Israel's right to kill Hamas. Now, I'm not a particularly big fan of Hamas. They are an Islamist group, meaning they believe in the establishment of an Islamic state. That is not a good thing in, in my view. But in this instance, if we contextualize it right here and now and take out and bracket all the other stuff that Hamas has said, Hamas is acting in the interests of the Palestinians and Israel certainly is not. And yet Dean Obidala, rather than coming to the defense of those same Palestinians is defending both sides. He's playing both sidesism. Well, they're both bad. What the Palestinians did was bad. What Israel is doing is bad. No, no. The Palestinians, Hamas, they were doing a jailbreak they were not convicted of a crime. They were not even charged with a crime. They are just living in a place. They had the unlucky fortune to be born there. And based upon that accident of birth, they are being treated like complete and utter trash. So why should I listen to Dean Obidala? I honestly don't even know why I have Sirius XM. The only other reason I can think of is, well, if I'm driving, if I want to listen to the news, catch up with the news on CNN or MSNBC or, or one of those other lousy networks, I can do it in the car. I know that's exactly what I did when I moved down from Kansas to Texas last year. 
I had serious XM progress on. There was nothing else to do. What do you do when you're on the road? Count license plates? No. Something to do. It's just passing the time. So it was useful then. But is it useful now? I don't see how. I am a subscriber to Amazon Prime. The same kinds of um, music channels that Sirius XM has can be found on Amazon Prime. Not the same ones, but similar. So, after listening to Dean Obidala play this kind of both sides with Israel, which is a state, and Palestine, which is not a state, putting them both into the same category, I am really, really thinking about dropping my subscription to Sirius XM. Now, I'm not going to do that on the spur of the moment. I will think about it. I don't make rash decisions. That's not the way I am. Right now, that is what I would like to do. I might change or modify my opinion tomorrow or next week or next month or whenever. I'm not sure what I'll do. But I've found that for a while, I used to listen to Sirius XM practically every day on my cell phone. Get an app. You can actually get more Sirius XM channels on the app than you can in your car. So I would listen to it mostly in my app, not in my car. I'm not in my car that much. I get in my car. How long am I in the car? Five minutes? I don't drive that much. I don't go to many places. I stay around here, chat with friends, go to restaurants, go to parks, but they're all right around me. Once in a great while, I will go to a meeting. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I'm there. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and I'm back home. Is it worth having Sirius XM for that amount of time? Right now, right now, I don't think so. Now, I might, again, change my mind tomorrow. I, I don't know, but right now, after listening to Dino Bidala. I feel like I, I usually I take Citrusel, Metamucil, or if that fails, Milk of Magnesia. I feel like I don't need any of them today. Just listening to Dino Bidala has done the trick. Now look, I have nothing against Dino Bidala. He is making a living. How much of what he says he believes, I don't know. But I can tell you, if he started saying the kinds of things that I'm saying right now, he would not be working for Sirius XM much longer. He'd be gone. I guess he could go back to his law practice. He is a lawyer. He's an attorney. I don't know if he wants that or not. I'm sure he's making a lot more money working for Sirius XM than he was making as an attorney, although I don't know that either. So I would encourage all of you, everyone listening to me, to consider the situation in Palestine from the perspective of the Palestinians. Bracket 
set aside the interests of Israel. No matter how much you may like Israel, and admittedly I don't like it at all, but even if you do, say you really love Israel, and over the years I have known people who did. Our friendships were not that strong, uh, and we, we got into frequent arguments, but, uh, but I've, known, I've known people who were strong Zionists. Now, I'm not going to join the Bund. I know the guy who runs the largest Bund organization in the United States. Won't mention his name. Um, they are a bit different than the original Bund. The original Bund was secular. This new Bund is not exactly secular. In fact, to be honest, I'm not even sure what it is, but it's, it, it's a new Bund. It's not the old Bund. Now, it's not Orthodox Jewish. It's not Reform Jewish. It's not Reconstructionist Jewish. It's not Conservative Jewish. It's not Traditional Jewish. But it's Jewish. And they do practice some form of Judaism. Exactly what that form is, I don't know. Although I have no desire to be a part of the Bund, since I don't practice any kind of Judaism, although I was born into a Jewish family. My mother and my father were both Ashkenazi Jews. Still, I am sympathetic to the Bund and what they stand for. I honor the Bund. I could not be a member of it. It would be hypocritical on my part. I belong to a different religion. I left Judaism when I was 14 years old. What that other religion is, is inconsequential. Point is, I don't follow Judaism. So being a part of the Bund would be a contradiction. But I empathize with them. I am proud that there is at least one organization, and in fact there are others too, there isn't just one, but I am proud that there is at least one organization which is willing to stand up against the Zionist state of Israel. Bear in mind, Zionism was started by a secular, not a religious Jew, a secular Jew. Just like the American Pledge of Allegiance was written by an atheist. The term, um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, that clause, under God, was inserted into the Pledge of Allegiance back into the 1950s at the heart of the Army McCarthy hearings. The person who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance wanted to create a kind of secular prayer that all Americans, even Americans like himself, who were atheists, could say, kind of a substitute for a prayer, in effect. So, again, I would ask that you at the very least consider the possibility that maybe the Palestinians deserve to be treated with human rights because if you know if you know anything about that part of the world you know th that they are not they are denied human rights systematically as a part of Israeli policy so they're kind of a limbo situation they're not really a part of Israel but they're not a country either so what are they are they, I guess they're a territory of Israel, sort of. 
but territories generally have rights. Like Washington, D.C. is a territory of the United States. Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States. Those places have rights. The Palestinian territories do not. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.